Hola. What's up, guys? Mike here, owner of Phil Kraft Survival. Um, all about preparedness. That's what we're talking about this week. Um, I promise you I've lined you out for preparedness, starting with the most important thing, which is preparing yourself for the worst case scenario. That includes your mindset, your physical capabilities, and your equipment. Uh, in addition to that, it includes your abilities, right? You can have all the equipment in the world, you can have the most resilient mindset, but if you don't know how to use the stuff that you carry, then you're deficient. You're not as efficient as you could be. Um, a little digression, you know, all this stuff that's going on in the world, take it for what it's worth. A small percentage of our population who are trying to burn our freedoms and country to the ground and a large percentage of the population that doesn't get involved. Why? Because we're too busy working, running businesses, taking care of our kids, uh, taking care of our families, you know, being leaders in our communities, whatever the cause. Um, don't think, don't buy into the hysteria or systemicism of everything that's going on. Because the small things that you see in the media of people acting out violently is very small. Now, could it get worse? Yes. So what I do is I tell everybody to prepare for the worst case scenario. Meaning we're not going to scale up preparation. I'm not going to say, hey, get a tourniquet today, train on it today, and then get a pistol next year. What I'm saying is plan for the worst case, prepare for the worst case, and you'll be covered with everything in between. Now, there's no need to scale up preparedness. It should be a commitment in lifestyle because this should be part of your life. This should not be a training course. Uh, this should not be a uh, Instagram post, an, a podcast. It should be integrated into your life. The way you think, the way you act, the way you look at your individual preparedness. And it starts there, right? It starts with your individual capabilities. You know, I have a lot of experience with a special operations background, but it's not necessarily correlated or advantageous to civilian life, right? We, we intentionally went into offensive situations to uh, kill or capture bad guys. Well, in the world in which we live, mitigating your risk, reducing the potential threat is how we live and navigate. I, I don't want to be offensive in this nature. I want to be very defensive and setting myself up to not be exposed to violent encounters. That's how you survive. That's what survival is. But also having the tools and the capability a capacity to be able to address anything that I can, are, am confronted with, with the appropriate measure of violence uh, to be able to defend my life. Uh, I just said the word violence, it's probably going to get me banned off of social media uh, because that's how social media is nowadays. Uh, we just lost our ability to monetize on YouTube. I've been banned on live feeds for speaking my mind. Uh, I guess First Amendment rights only apply to those who are on the left, maybe, um, or have a different viewpoint than I have, which, whatever. All right, so let's start, start with individual preparedness. It starts with your mind. A lot of people say, hey, mindset is everything, crush everything, uh, you know, keep a strong, resilient mind. My question would be, what the fuck does that mean? I mean, what does that mean to have a great mindset? Well, people think, that people are born with mindsets, and maybe there's something to that, meaning maybe there's something to your childhood experiences that you set you up for success. But when I think of mindset, I think about resiliency, meaning if I punch you in the face, how are you gonna act when I punch you in the face, and what are you gonna do afterwards, right? Because in survival, it's about knowing how to react and respond under stress, and then when you are beat or defeated, how are you gonna react to stay alive? It's the will to survive that's really more important to me and mindset than anything else. Um, if I have the proper mindset that's resilient, um, when I am losing the fight, uh, when I am getting defeated, I'm not going to allow myself to crumple. I'm not going to allow myself to give up. I'm not going to quit. So how is resilient mindset developed? Well, partially it's developed with physical activity. Pushing your physical body to the limitations um, to its own individual limitations, and then pushing past those uh, manufactured limitations uh, using your mind. So a lot of the times we're told what we can't do, 
And then when you get to that threshold, you go, oh, I can't do that because that's just not possible. Well, when you push yourself physically beyond that, using your mind, it sets yourself up for success, but also develops a more resilient mindset. In addition to that, when you do things like train, when you do things like instill, instill confidence in your mindset and psyche, you are by default allowing yourself to be more resilient because you take paranoia. Most people in the absence of knowledge, information, understanding have paranoia. You take that and you replace that with training, with knowledge, with preparedness, then you are by default gaining a more resilient mindset because confidence and self-esteem directly correlate to your ability to be more resilient. So that's super important. Uh, my recommendation in the tangibles is one, understand how to cope with stress. Physically, you could breathe, right? Taking the time to take an oxygen and compose yourself. Two, train, get more comfortable operating in chaos. And three, test your physical will and your mindset by pushing yourself to the physical limitations of your capability. So do workouts of the day. Challenge yourself to go long extended hikes. Set a goal uh, that's physical and then meet and achieve that goal. Those things will set you up for mindset instead of just saying, mindset is everything. Yeah, no shit, mindset's everything. How do I start? What's the start point? All right, the next thing we need to understand is uh, the equipment we carry and then the training that we utilize to be able to um, operate under stress. Remember, everything that has to, be, uh, has to do with you as an individual really has to do with how you react and respond under stress. So I, I teach people low grade and high grade. If you have low grade stress and you react poorly, it probably means that you're gonna suck at high grade stress. What's low grade stress? Uh, your girlfriend being mad at you because you liked an Instagram post. That's low grade. Where you go, huh, man, well, why are you doing this? And you overreact, you get emotional and you start losing your shit over something that's not really a big deal. That um, translates to how you react under high grade stress. Because it's not going to get better with more stress. It's going to get worse. So how do you respond when you're confronted with trauma? When you're, you're confronted with a, um, somebody who's bullying you or wants to beat you up or kick your ass or whatever the, whatever the stressful event is? Man-made, natural disasters. Well, if a bully wants to pick on you and he freaks you out and then you lose your shit because you overreact, well, that could set you up for not surviving you overreact and you don't use cognitive brain uh, because you're using primal instinct, you could do something really dumb. So how you react under stress really matters. It matters most uh, in, in preparedness. Uh, a lot of people like to do technical things like I'm a technical expert at applying this tourniquet. Well, that's good. Are you a technical expert at applying this tourniquet under stress? That's a different variation, a different question. Okay, so everyday carry. It starts with EDC. This is my everyday carry. Right now, we're developing a bag, and people ask me all the time, when the hell is the bag going to come out? Well, when it comes out, 60 days at a minimum because we're dealing with COVID, manufacturing, all this stuff, and I want to get it right. Until then, I run an Adam Patagonia fly fishing bag. This bag costs 35 40 50 bucks uh, online, but it has the capacity for me to carry. So what I mean is, this is a fly fishing bag, fits into my lifestyle, doesn't stand out as something like, who's that guy carrying that chest rig? No, it's a fly fishing bag. But I can carry all the things that I need in this bag to be able to sustain life. Let me go through my bag. Headlamp, right? I, I want the ability to uh, defend my life, but also see what I'm defending. Most gunfights, for example, in self-defense happen at night. But are we prepared for the night? Probably not. You probably have red fiber optic front sights on your gun because you shoot IPSC IDPA. You probably don't have a light on your gun or in your uh, European man satchel. And so this is a, a really tactical uh, um, enhancing piece of equipment. It's mission essential, but also it's good for just using for everyday purposes, right? This is a utilitarian uh, piece of equipment. I have to use it to check my car. I have to use it to check my surroundings. I have to use it in camping to do whatever I do at night. So headlamp, tourniquets, and I'm pulling this at no specific priority 
Um, I'm just pulling it out of my bag as I have it. This is a cat tourniquet. This is going to save your life. This is meant to stop the bleed in femoral and brachial bleeds or arterial bleeds. This piece of equipment costs $29.99. It's on our website. There's not a great margin. North American Rescue makes this. Uh, special operations, the military, and police uh, across the nation have this because that's their standard operating procedure. You can stop the bleed in a matter of seconds. This I carry in all my kit for myself, for anybody in my family, my friends, the list goes on. Carry this. Uh, we have actually this little guy, which is our outside the waistband tourniquet holder. We do sell our inside the waistband, but this is our outside the waistband. Uh, and look, this could go on your kit, it can go on your belt, it can go in your MERS. Just have it, but have it in arm's reach to be able to save your own life. In addition to that, tying into med, I have our BHRK, our basic hemorrhage response kit in here broken down. Um, our basic hemorrhage response kit is an individual IFAC, which stands for individual first aid kit. Carry an individual first aid kit for you or for treating somebody in your family. Now, if you have a family, I would recommend carrying more than just an individual first aid kit. Uh, I carry this in, me, in here for me, but I can treat anybody that's around me if I have to. But the priority of this in my kit is for treating me, okay? Stop the bleed in conjunction with a tourniquet. You know, this is the, the, the pouch from our, our, our visor panel for quick access in your vehicle, but can be used, I use this inside my everyday carry bag. Tape, uh, you never know when you need tape, an extra magazine. I carry a map, look at, I, I'm big on maps, but this map um, is the backup when the power goes out. If you don't have offline maps, then you need a map, especially in rural areas like I live. A Sharpie, uh, a pen that you could use as a weapon, but also it's a pen, and I carry my everyday carry pistol. Now this everyday carry pistol is a SIG 320X carry. Um, this is one of my favorite everyday carry pistols in this configuration. Here's the problem, like, I'll show you, I hate to give you a crotch shot, but this in my setup here is massive. And I'm a big guy, but this setup is huge. Now, this right here is comfortable, but how long can I go through the day carrying this setup? Well, if I have a bag, I can simply transfer this into my bag and then be prepared for the draw uh, of pulling this pistol out if I have to. Now, this is our holster that we carry. Um, which allows you to press check, see the round, load, unload, run an RMR if you have to with no modifications. And it offsets the belt buckle um, off of the clip that ties into your belt, which means it sets you up for a true appendix carry, which is center line of your body, which allows you the best opportunity to mask the gun as opposed to offsetting it here. Like most companies have a clip in the middle, which means you can't run it on your belt uh, because your belt buckle is here, so you have to set it here, which is actually where your appendix is at. The problem with that is it's offsetting my 21 round mag to where it's going to print. Uh, this, this clip here, this claw, tilts it this way to allow you to be set up, but I like that I'm set up here because that's really what I want it. Um, I don't want it here because this gets closer to the groove of my leg and makes it more uncomfortable to carry. And what we're talking about is you want the comfort to carry. Like, if I'm, if I'm carrying a pistol, I'm carrying a pistol because um, it's comfortable. The first couple times you get in and out of your car and you go, this sucks, you're not going to carry it. I hate to say preparedness equals comfort, but it does. Because if you're not comfortable with using the equipment, with carrying the equipment, you just won't do it. I've been that lazy butthole down range where, I, you know, am I going to carry in this little building? Nah, it's too uncomfortable or I'm not going to do it. Don't get complacent. Don't get lazy. Constantly force yourself to be in that process. A um, couple other things. I have this, uh, this little tool here, which allows me to dump the air in my tires uh, for mobility. Uh, I do have some CBD oil. I use Wildlands Hemp Company and Uncana CBD. Big fan of CBD. Uh, I have trauma shears. Trauma shears allow you to cut uh, seat belts, um, cut yourself out of bad circumstances, but the utility in it also is, I, I cut a lot of stuff. I carried those for years carrying flex cuffs, but obviously I don't need flex cuffs anymore. Um, hand sanitizer, business cards, and the list goes on. So remember, remember the minimum configuration that you need to carry is you need to carry an everyday carry, concealed carry pistol, you need to carry med. 
Med includes a tourniquet, uh, inside, outside the waistband, and a basic hemorrhaging response kit. Um, the basic hemorrhaging response kit is called the BHRK. We sell it online. You guys can use my coupon code. It's Mike. Always use that. I'm going to keep this short because the next video I'm going to do in, in the segment I'm going to be doing is how to act and respond under stress before we get into mobility. Thanks, guys. I hope this made the cut because I think the limit might be 15 minutes, but we'll see. Thanks, guys.